this video I'm going to show you how to use the Mixed Art Photoshop action. So the way the action works is you open up your photo, you simply brush your side with the color and just play the action. And here is the effect that the action creates. The action creates this Mixed Art effect. So there is the watercolor effect, the text, the sketch effect, a lot of different textures and many other things. So the action is also going to create the 30% color looks that you can choose from. And the whole effect is completely randomized, so every time you run the action, you will get a unique result, even if you use the same brush area. And the results that you get are also fully layered, so there is a lot of options for further customizing the design after the action is finished. Right, so I'm just going to close down these two windows now. So after you open up your photo, before you start using the action, there are just a few things you should check just to make sure the action will run without any errors. So the first thing you should check is that your photo is the background layer. So it should be called background and have this little lock icon. And if you have something like this, just go to layer, new, and choose a background from layer. Then click on this menu icon over here and choose panel options from here. And just make sure that this option here, the add copy, the copy layer is groups is checked. Then just go to the image mode, make sure your photo is the RGB color mode, 8 bit channel. And you can check the image size from here. So for best results, you should use the image that run from 20 the 40, 45, 100 pixels wide or high. Alright. To load the action, go to Window, Actions, click on the menu icon right here, Load Actions, and here just choose the action from a folder according to a Photoshop version. You select the action file, choose Load, and the action will appear here in your Actions panel. Just open the folder and find the action here. Then just hit Binner keyboard to select the brush tool, right click anywhere inside the canvas, click on the gear icon over here, Load Brushes, and again, just choose the brushes file from a folder according to a Photoshop version. You select the brushes file, choose load, and the brushes will appear here in your brushes panel. Right, so what you have to do now is just go to layer, new layer to create a new layer, and name it brush. It's very important that you spell this correctly because otherwise the action won't work. So all letters lowercase. And now what you need to do is to just select the brush tool, pick a salt brush, choose any color here, color doesn't matter, and simply brush where you wish to apply the effect. Right, just like this, you don't have to be precise at all. So, as I heard you done the brushing before, so I'm just going to open up my PSD file. Here it is. So I have done the brushing. And it's important that you brush over your photo while this brush layer is selected, so you need to have this color fill on your brush layer. Alright? And now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to expand a little bit the canvas size here, on the top and on the right to have a little bit more space. It's always better to have more space because you can easily crop the image later and you'll be sure that the effect won't be cut off. So I'm just gonna go to the image, canvas size, and I gotta check the relative option here. I'm gonna click on this uh, point here. So I'm choosing the direction which I want to expand the canvas. So I want to expand the canvas at the top and I'm just gonna increase the height for 250 pixels. All right. Now I'm going to go to image canvas size again and just going to click on the here to the, choose the direction from left to right. So as I want to expand the canvas on the right side and I'm just going to uh, increase the width for the 250, which is okay. You know, I got to expand the canvas on top and on the right. So you can do the same to expand the canvas on any side of the photo. And all you have to do now is just select the action here inside a folder and just click play. And what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to fasten the video here and I'm going to get back when the action is finished. Then I'm going to go through all the layers to show you how it actually works, how it affects the design and how can you customize it. All right, so the action here just finished. So I'm just going to close the actions panel and I'm going to expand a little bit this layers panel here. So the first thing you probably want to do each time you run the action is to just quickly close down all these folders. So how can you quickly do that is to just hold Control and Alt buttons for PC or Command Option for Mac and while the Mixed Art folder is selected, just click on this little arrow here. Um, that way you're going to close down all the folders. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to start customizing this effect from the bottom. And I'm just gonna hide all these layers and I'm going to start them one one by one because in that way you better understand how each layer works. So the first layer that we got here is the background color. And if you double click on this layer thumbnail, you can here choose any color that you like for the background. And 
here we got the uh, background textures. All right. And how you customize these layers is you just change their opacity. And for layers that you customize by changing the opacity, you can change the opacity either by clicking on the word opacity and drag it to the side, or you can just click on this arrow here and move the slider left or right. All right? I'm just going to leave the default. And the next one we got here is the photo outline, so I'm just going to turn it on. So this is, as it says, the outline uh, of the photo, and this layer has a layer mask here. See, if you just shift click on this layer mask to disable this layer mask, you'll have the outline of the whole photo. When you turn it on, you're going to have uh, lower the opacity of the outline outside of the brush area. Right, so what you can do is you can open the properties panel here, just go to window, just properties, and you can here change the density of the layer mask. So if you set it at 100%, then the sketch will be visible only over your brushed area and not outside of the brushed area. All right, and as you start lowering the density, you're going to start revealing the effect outside of the brush area as well. All right, and as you can see here, we got a line uh, that's due to changing the uh, canvas size, so we got this edge over here visible in the outline layer. So what you can do is, as we have the lower the density of the layer mask here, to remove this line completely, we're just going to add this layer into a new folder. So just go to layer new and choose a, a group from layers. And you can just add the layer mask to this folder, pick a brush tool, choose a salt brush, set foreground color to black, and now you can just simply brush over this line to remove it. Alright, just like that. And we're going to do the same for this vertical line over here. Alright, that's it. So we removed this line. And what you can do is you can change the opacity of the photo outline. Just going to boost it a little bit. Just like that. And I'm just going to turn on the paint texture folder before using this one here. I'm just going to turn on uh, this one as well. So this is the paint textures folder. And when you open the folder, you find that this effect is fully layered. So what you can do, you can hide all the layers. You can start turning one one by one to see how each layer affects the design. All right. And what you can do is you can change the opacities of any of those layers. Right, and these layers also have their layer mask. So what you can do is, you can change the density of the layer masks to make the effect visible outside of these uh, white areas here. Right. So just gonna adjust the opacity a little bit of this layer here. So the chemistry can change the density as well. So you can see how it works. Okay. And what you can see here is that we got this edge visible again because of the canvas size that we expanded. So if you don't expand the canvas size, you won't have this problem, but it's easy to solve. So what you need to do is to see which layer has this line. So just turn it off and on, and you can see that is this layer over here. Now, as this layer also has the lower density of the layer mask, you can just add it to a new folder. Okay, you add the layer mask on this folder, and again you choose the brush tool. You pick a soft brush, you set foreground color to black, and you simply brush to remove that edge. All right. Now, if you wish to add the texture here on the top, on the side, but you don't wish to be cut it off, what you need to do is to use this layer here. But before that, just gonna correct this 
edge over here from these layers. So I'm just going to add this layer into the folder as well. And just going to brush over the edge, just like that. Okay. So this layer here is a reveal original photo, or it says here brush white into mask. So when you brush here, you just pick any of these uh, watercolor brushes, and when you start brushing, we start revealing your original photo, as you can see. But again, you can get these edge visible here, as this uh, layer is just going to reveal the photo, so it's going to reveal these uh, edge here, the transition between the photo and the expanded canvas. And what you can do is you can simply add the texture, and you can then just turn on this layer here, is the reveal original photo color layer to colorize that textures and then we double click here you can choose any color that you like so just gonna choose some color from the photo all right just like that and just gonna select this layer and I'm going to change its opacity to make this texture more visible. Okay. So what you can do is you can only select this layer mask, pick a salt brush and brush with the black if you wish to remove the texture you just added and you can add a new one. So I'm just gonna select the this brush over here, set foreground color to white. And what you can do is you can always brush. Whenever you brush, the brush is going to get uh, updated so it's going to change its size it's going to rotate and others so you can always click the brush then go step back if you wish to remove and brush with the new settings of the brush just like that okay and what you can also do is you can select these two layers and press ctrl or command j on your keyboard to duplicate both layers you can just here uh, set foreground color to black and press shift and f5 on the keyboard and just fill this layer mask with a foreground color so now this layer doesn't have any textures and now you can add uh, more textures so this is useful if you wish to have uh, you wish to add more uh, several textures with the different colors so how you do that you just duplicate these layers several times and now for example I can select the layer mask of this layer and brush over here with a white color if you wish to add more details here and then turn on the color and choose some completely other color for these textures compared to this one here okay and then you can adjust the opacity of this layer uh, and these textures again separately from the other texture layers that you made. All right, so you can duplicate these layers as many times as you want to create a lot of different textures, a lot of different colors, and you can always hide the color layer to just leave the original photo color on the areas, okay, as I can do here. And once more, if you have that edge of the canvas size, then you need to colorize the layer to hide the edge, as you can see here. Here we don't have that edge, so I don't have to use the color. I can use the original photo color, or I can use any other color that you like. Okay, so the next one we got here is the text, so I'm just going to turn it on. And the way you add the text is you just double click on this layer here, and you will see that typing point will appear here. So you can just start typing your text, or you can paste your text. So what I'm going to do is just going to set some settings here change the font and I'm going to change the size, change the alignment to centered and now I'm just going to add some random text so I'm just going to go to the type and choose space here alright so now what I'm going to do is right click on this text layer and choose convert to paragraph text so I'm just going to zoom out and double click here again and then just going to transform this text box so just a little bit outside of the canvas and 
Now just go and double click here, select the text, press Ctrl Command C and then Ctrl Command V to paste the text and I'm going to repeat that several times to cover the whole photo. Okay, so we'll just zoom in. And now I'm just going to go to the window character and here I'm going to select the whole text and I'm going to change the spacing between the lines just like this. Okay, and I'm just going to copy this text and paste it again so I can cover the whole photo. Alright, just like that. And you can double click here and again make any changes to the text that you want. I'm just going to change the color here. So you can use any of the photo colors or you can simply pick some other color here uh, that you like. I'm going to choose this one here. Alright. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change the opacity here of the text. Something like this. Okay. Now, as you can see, the text layer has the layer mask here, so the text is visible by default only over your textures uh, areas. And what you can do is you can brush with the black uh, color into layer mask if you wish to remove the text on any area or brush with the white if you wish to add text uh, on additional areas. You can use the paint brushes here or you can use a salt brush. So as you can see if you brush with the white you start rebuilding the text or you can simply start removing the text by brushing with the black color into layer masks. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select this watercolor brush over here. I'm going to set the foreground color to black and I'm just going to remove some areas of the text. like that and you can always reveal the text again by brushing with a white color so you can just brush with the white you're gonna reveal the text on that areas again so I'm gonna reveal the text here just like that. And what you can also do is you can delete this layer mask or fill it with a black color and hide the complete text and then just select the some of the watercolor brushes, set the color to white and simply start brushing wherever you wish to reveal the text. Alright, just like this. to do is just gonna boost the opacity a little bit now. Maybe remove the text a little bit over here. You can also use the square brackets in a keyboard to simply increase or decrease the size of your brush. Right? So you can use your own text, you can use your own font and make any other changes to the text as you like and also you can choose where you wish the text to appear or the effect. And the next layer we got here is the boost colors layer. So just gonna turn it on. So what this layer does is basically going to boost all the colors 
of your subject of your brushed area so you can adjust the opacity here and I'm just gonna drop it down like this and the next layer we got is the reveal details okay and you can change the opacity over here I'm just gonna leave it default and the next we got here is the foreground texture I'm just gonna turn it on right and you can change the opacity of the texture here okay and next what we got here is the core looks folder so when you open the folder as I mentioned at the beginning of the video you'll find 30% color looks that you can choose from and all you need to do is to just select any of these color looks you turn it on you see how it looks and if it doesn't work well with your photo you simply hide a layer and try with another and what you can also do is you can combine a few color looks and that's exactly what I'm going to do with this example so I'm just gonna turn on this color look over here and just gonna drop down its opacity a little bit and I'm going to turn on this one here as well and then I'm going to change the opacity of this color look just like that. You can combine more than two color looks and always get uh, even more color looks. Okay, and we'll just increase the opacity of the text a little bit more. Just like that. Okay, so what we got next here is the overall contrast. Just gonna turn it on and how just the contrast is you just change the opacity of this layer. Okay, and here we got the overall brightness. So when you double click here, you can use these five sliders to adjust the brightness. So this one here is boosting the shadows. This one here is boosting the highlights. This one here is affecting the midtones. And you got these two sliders. This one is gonna fade the highlights and this one is going to fade the shadows. And by default, the shadows will be faded a little bit. So I'm just gonna Adjust the slider just slightly. Okay. And next we got here is the oral vibrance and saturation. So you can just turn it on. And double click here. What you can do is you can adjust the vibrance and saturation of the photo using these two sliders. So I'm just going to increase the vibrance and I'm going to increase the saturation as well just like that okay and just gonna make a few more changes here just gonna duplicate this layer I'm gonna fill the layer mask with a black color so I remove all the textures that are on this layer I'm just gonna pick this other color brush here, set program color to white, and just gonna brush over here to reveal more of the original photo in this area. Okay, so just gonna adjust the opacity. Okay. And just gonna make a small change to the text. So I'm just gonna pick the other brush, reveal the text a little bit over here. So the last layer we've got here is the oral sharpening. Just gonna turn it on. Now, if you didn't make any changes to the photo, you can just adjust the sharpening by changing the opacity here. But if you removed uh, any area of the texture, you added some new textures, you need to update this layer as well. So how to do that? You just delete this layer and press Control Alt Shift and D or Command Alt Shift and D on your keyboard to make a screenshot. 
and then press Ctrl or Command Shift U to the saturated layer and just go to Filter, Other, High Pass and just set the radius to 2 pixels here and now change the blending mode of this layer to Overlay right? and now what you can do is you can adjust the sharpening by changing the opacity here I'm just going to leave it default okay and one more layer we got here is the brush layer that we made at the beginning of the video so as I have mentioned the action is made so that the whole effect is completely randomized so every time you run the action you get a unique result uh, even if you use the same brush area so if you just delete this folder and you just play the action again you're going to get unique result so you can always run the action a few times to get uh, starting variation of the textures and everything that you like and then you can just further customize the effect using the layers here. Alright, so I'm very happy with these results. So there's one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to crop the photo right now. So as I have mentioned, it's always better to have more space. It's always better that you increase the camera size to get more space around your brushed area and then simply crop the image later. Okay, so just gonna crop it a little bit here on the top. Yeah, just like that. So it's from the crop box as you like, you just hit enter and that's it. Alright, so let's just quickly check the before and after. So this was the before, this is our brush area and this is the result. Alright, so I hope you understood everything but if you still need any help or get any questions Feel free to contact me anytime via my Invato Profit page. Thanks for watching.